Hey there YouTube, Travis here. So I've been playing with the Pook Maxi 2 here a little bit uh, that you got to see in the last video and because the engine on this one is stuck I thought this would be a good opportunity to make, to remake I should say, a video about uh, my experiences dealing with seized moped engines. So in my original video I unseized the E50 that was on this 1978 Pook Maxi, my first one. I know that video proved very popular. Um, I was never quite satisfied with it. I made a couple rookie mistakes, and uh, since then I've learned an awful lot more. Okay, so here's a super quick rundown on why an engine will seize, and this applies to all two-stroke motors. So the oil that you add to your gasoline, uh, that lubricates your piston right here as it's moving up and down through your cylinder right here. This is the cylinder and piston that came off of the Maxi N, and I just removed them to put the kit on. They are in fabulous shape, and I'll probably be reusing them on some other bike. So like I said, this piston is moving up and down in here. It's being lubricated by the oil in the gasoline, and this will seize inside the cylinder if there's insufficient lubrication. This can be caused by one, uh, you're not running enough oil in your gas or more commonly the engine temperature gets so hot that it actually breaks down the oil and then that leads to the seize. And that's what I believe happened to this cylinder and piston right here. This came off of my friend's 78 Pook Maxi Lux. This was what was originally in there. And looking at this piston, see how at the bottom here it's cracked off? I believe this was hard seized back in the 1980s or whenever this was last uh, ridden. And looking at the cylinder, it's got some damage right there. So I'm not even sure if honing this thing out would be enough. You might have to bore this out to accept a larger piston if you wanted to reuse this. But be it that it's just a stock high torque cylinder, it's not very difficult to get a replacement. This is why a head temperature gauge is a really smart investment if you're going to put on a kit. Even if it's just a little 50cc K-Star like the what's on this Maxi N right now. Uh, and it's also why proper timing and jetting are critical. Remember, the real reason the piston gets stuck is because that metal expands as the temperature gets too hot. And so before I show you this engine, one final thing I'd like to talk about is a soft seize versus a hard seize. The way I like to think about it is if you soft seize, you're able to ride the bike home. It gets stuck, but then it frees itself up pretty quickly. A hard seize is where, like we see right here, the piston is completely locked up even after the engine has completely cooled down. So basically what I'm doing here, um, this is the Marini MO2 that came off the Malaguti commuter. Uh, I've let penetrating oil sit on top of the piston here. It's been about a week. And I've seen people use penetrating oil, PB Blaster, Marvel Mystery Oil, and then sometimes they'll combine Marvel Mystery Oil with like diesel or gasoline or something like that. But uh, those are the three primary things I've seen used and you let that sit on the engine um, that's why the Maxi 2 is sitting on the Pook approved moped stand and after it's been sitting for a bit you want to place something like it's not near as wide as it should be but a wooden dowel and you get a hammer preferably a mallet I don't have one right now and what we're trying to do right here is to push the piston down without damaging the top of it that's why, you know, if the piston was higher, I'm not just taking the hammer and bashing it like that. Well, this thing is pretty stuck. It's going to need a lot of hammering, which I don't quite have time for right now. The principle of this video is not to show you the unseizing of the MO2, it's to show you the unseizing of the Pook Maxi 2. We'll jump back to that here in just a second. And so now for the part you've all been waiting for, let's we'll see if we can break this Maxi 2 free. Again, this one's just been stuck from sitting. Let's see what we can do. We started by removing the spark plug, boot comes off, plug comes out, you probably will need a spark plug socket for that. And then we sprayed our penetrating agent down through the spark plug hole. And now it's been a week's time, so we're going to take it off the stand and uh, see if we can get this thing unstuck. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a look at that piston. Remember you've got four head nuts right here, one, two, three, and four. Really helps if you get a little midget socket set like this with an extension, 10 millimeter nuts. Oh, 
Also, this particular head is not very friendly to uh, getting the nuts out easily, so you can just take the end of the socket right here, and kind of turn it and rotate it, and what I find is that after the nut's all the way loose, the nut actually ends up in the bottom of the socket. Okay, so the head came off. Note the head gasket's still on there. Down here, make sure you can get all four of your nuts and all four of your washers. When I started taking this out, one of the studs came along with the ride. That's okay. We can install that back in. The threads on this are just dirty. And we can take a moment here to inspect a cylinder and piston. Now, luckily, this cylinder walls in here look pretty good. Um, pretty smooth. I'm not seeing any serious scoring or anything like that. And there's our piston. Carbon buildup on top is normal. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can break this thing free. Uh, note, it is decently far down the cylinder, but it's not so far that you can see the exhaust or intake ports, so when we um, beat it back down, we should still have some room to go. Alright YouTube, well here's the moment of truth. It's moving! Alright. Oh, let me see the camera. All right, so you can see our progress down here. Just from doing that, you can now see our uh, port down there for our exhaust. Took a little bit of the carbon off the top of the piston. We are getting there. And once again, this flywheel cover is just two screws. There's your flywheel. Well, hey. Hey. We've broken this thing free. Give that thing a turn, Will. Alright, I've got a good feeling about this guy. Yes, I do. So, if you break the piston free and uh, you're still having issues afterwards, it's not a bad idea to check the compression, make sure it's within tolerance. Um, on my first Pookie 50, uh, after a very botched gas tank repair job I did, I seized it because all kinds of junk was in the gas um, from leftover remnants of my works treatment to old rusty gas to all oh, other kinds of embarrassing things. The rings looked okay when I first took it apart, but on closer inspection they were stuck to the piston on the one side and I ended up replacing both the rings and the piston in that case. Okay YouTube, well I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope it was helpful. Until next time.